So when we look at gum disease and body health, we see all kinds of things. I, you may be unaware, but osteoporosis, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, respiratory diseases, all of these things uh, are debilitating to um, uh, the, the entire body, right? We have cancer, respiratory disease, heart disease, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. And let's look at the differences between men and women. Men are uh, three times more likely um, to be impotent uh, from the chronic inflammation of gum disease. Um, and by the way, look at the proportion of gum disease from men to women, 56% in men, 38% in women. So women, uh, gum disease affects puberty and menstruation, uh, and, and they have a higher uh, incidence of gum disease. Here's that bi-directional thing where um, there is an increased amount of gingivitis due to hormones uh, during, even during pregnancy, pregnancy um, there is a condition called pregnancy gingivitis and inflammation of the gums, but ha that happens during the hormone changes that occur during pregnancy. Um, so if you look at women's health on the right there, you see the effects on puberty and menstruation, pregnancy. You know, during pregnancy, women are more likely to have a preterm baby or um, preeclampsia, dangerous blood pressure condition. Um, due to this chronic inflammation of gum disease. And in menopause, they're 86% more likely to develop gum disease post-menopause. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And for men, men are 14, uh, they have a 14% higher incidence uh, to develop cancers. And if you look at this higher incidence, kidney cancer is at 49%, pancreatic cancer at 54%. That was a st study done at Harvard University also back in 2006, and blood cancers, in addition to breast cancer, colorectal cancer, <clears throat> excuse me, um, esophageal cancer, and lung cancer. And there is a very important link between gum disease and diabetes, where diabetes causes the body, uh, it affects the body's ability to regulate blood sugar and um, and so gum disease is often seen from the inflammation caused by diabetic conditions. And also diabetic conditions make you much more likely um, of having um, a lot of serious periodontal problems. So there is a link and the research has been emerging of chronic inflammation as a link between gum disease and cancer. And, um, it's been, uh, and it's all this chronic inflammation. Here's another article on gum disease uh, deemed a catalyst for cancer cell growth. So um, this bacteria, Fusobacterium nucleatum, um, one of the most common, we call it a commensural bacteria in the mouth. And when it is out of balance, it's one of the worst pathogens um, that can be uh, found in Alzheimer's disease and colorectal cancer. Matter, matter of fact, the number one bacteria found in colorectal tumors is Fusobacterium nucleatum. So these are the alarming statistics everyone should be aware of. 80% of you over 35 has some form of gum disease. And the link to, from, between gum disease to systemic illness is well-established. And past approaches antibiotics and antimicrobials have been shown to be both ineffectual and harmful. It's not only harmful to the body, it's harmful to your wallet. Um, there are studies that show that untreated gum disease um, increases healthcare costs related to three of the most expensive systemic diseases by an average of 21%. It was 23% for regulation of diabetes, 19% um, for cerebral vascular disease, and 21% for people with cardiovascular disease. And by the way, that translates into three quarters of a trillion dollars, nearly, I'm sorry, just shy of three quarters of a trillion dollars, $720 billion of healthcare costs related to this. So if we could um, just focus on helping people reduce gum disease as the body's number one source of chronic inflammation, 
the savings on that um, could make universal health care affordable. So improving oral health um, reduces health care costs for the most costly, as I just said. These are the three that were the most prominent. And by the way, the study was done by the Aetna uh, Health Insurance Company, and it was repeated uh, in Japan with the exact same statistics on treating what's going on in your mouth and how it reduces health care costs for the whole body. So this is the progression. How does this happen? It all has to do with what you see here, which is um, a chart or, or, or a, an illustration showing that the balance, the balance of this microbial flora known as the oral microbiome is the center of the target there where that blue circle is. And you see green and yellow. That's um, supposed to signify um, a very thin, healthy, clear, odorless film on your teeth and gums, which um, has more aerobic bacteria and not so many of the bad guys. So when, when it goes out of balance, it can go one of two ways. It can go to the right where it becomes overbuilt, thick, sticky, smelly film. These little squiggly lines are supposed to um, uh, illustrate um, spirochetes. You can see the pink gums here turning red here. That's what happens when we lose this balance. And so here to the right, we see, you know, harmful oral care products. Um, we see people that aren't uh, effective in, um, you know, their nutrition is bad. They're not effective. We're going to talk about the cornerstones of oral health and what they are and how you can keep this blue circle. But to the left, um, you see a very, very almost like a desert. So these are people that use detergent toothpaste and alcohol-based mouthwashes and sugar alcohols like xylitol, which has been touted in the science to disturb and keep plaque from sticking to teeth. Well, healthy plaque is essential. It protects you from deadly. This, this in, in this middle of the circle down here, that plaque is a healthy microbiome that does everything from aiding in digestion to keeping your immune system functioning in a, in a healthy way to even making nitric oxide, which you may have heard of, which is an important molecule for the for a cardiovascular health, um, regulation of blood sugar and prevention of diabetes, cognitive health, um, and immune system regulation. And that's made by this um, uh, ecology known as the oral microbiome. The interesting thing is that the bacteria in and on our bodies is 10 times, 10 times estimates, 10 times the number of human cells. Our bacteria outnumber the bacteria in and on our bodies right now, as I'm speaking, outnumber our human cells by up to 10 times. But an even more interesting element is that these bacteria um, mimic or are the same, or rather our human cells, the mitochondrion that, that hold our all the genetic information that hold our um, DNA in the mitochondrion of the nucleus of every cell in our body mimics the shape of a bacterium and even divides the same. So there is a lot of discussion whether our human cells were once bacterial in origin many, many years ago uh, when the earth was just covered with microbial slime. So whether you are a creationist or an evolutionist, there is a very ancient relationship of man and microbe. Um, in addition, you know, there is a verse in, uh, in scripture in the ancient Hebrew Torah and, and Aramaic uh, um, text on the book of Genesis chapter two, verse seven, which says, um, God took from the dust of the earth and breathed his spirit into it. But that is a very loose and incorrect translation of the word in these ancient texts. The word is actually slime. And it makes sense that we became mind, body, and spirit when this slime, uh, God took from the slime of the earth and breathed his spirit into it. So 
um, very, very interesting um, uh, uh, theories and philosophies on our origins on this planet. So I have four microbiome commandments for all of you. One, essentially, we're made of microbes. Our microbes, even at this current time, outweigh our um, uh, uh, human cells by, as I said, estimates of uh, 10 to 1 and as low as 3 to 1, but there's a lot more microbes than there are human cells. Um, these microbes control us. We don't control them. Um, they perform vital functions. We would not be able to exist right now uh, without the microbial activity in our guts, um, you know, on our skin, in our mouth. And if you go to war with your microbes, like we've tried to do in oral care, um, you will lose. To, to stay healthy, everyone, um, my mantra is make peace with your microbes. <laughs> that That's my bitmoji. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the path of unhealthy bacteria that are out of balance um, was often thought to only be the bloodstream and that the hydrochloric acid of the stomach can prevent um, bacteria, harmful bacteria from the mouth from getting into the gut. Unfortunately, that's not true. And we see that it is a bi-directional approach, especially for people that are um, taking protonic drugs like Prilosec and these things to reduce the production of stomach acid. And we find that there are pathogens in the mouth that actually can be very resilient and getting past the harshest conditions such as the hydrochloric acid of the stomach. So what we see is oral bacteria also inducing intestinal inflammation and that they can colonize in the intestines and persist there, um, leading to uh, activation of the intestinal immune system and chronic inflammation and dysregulation of the immune system. And some of the bacteria have been P. gingivalis, which I've spoken of, uh, Fusobacterium nucleatum, which I've spoken of, and Klebsiella pneumonia, which have been um, found in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. So indeed, um, there is a very, very close connection between the microbiome of the mouth and the microbiome of your gut. Um, this is a uh, paper that uh, talked about uh, what I was speaking about, which is Fusobacterium nucleatum, one of the most common bacteria in the mouth, turning pathogen. And if you look here, if you can read just a little further down, you'll see that it has been implicated in adverse pregnancy outcomes, um, GI disorders, uh, and they're listed there, colorectal cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, appendicitis, cardiovascular disease, rheumatoid arthritis, respiratory tract infections, Lemaire syndrome, and even Alzheimer's disease, and a host of others uh, that aren't discussed in this article. But F. nucleatum or Fusobacterium nucleatum, um, when out of balance, becomes a very, very nasty pathogen in the body. And what are the factors affecting this dysbiosis or, or lack of balance of this microbial community of the oral microbiome uh, and, and the corresponding dysregulation of the immune system? Well, number one factor is diet and nutrition. Um, high carbohydrate diets, diets high in sugar, um, uh, actually breeds a dysregulation and a dysbiosis. Um, so you really want to follow, um, in my book, I talk about alkalizing anti-inflammatory and antioxidant rich um, uh, nutrition and how important that is for promoting uh, microbial homeostasis or that balance of the immune system. Um, we talk about toxicity and endotoxin production from dental treatments, such as root canals, jaw cavitations, which we're going to speak of, these chronic cavities in the jaw, these holes in the jaw, which we call osteonecrosis, and titanium implants, uh, the newest concern uh, for toxicity and endotoxin production. We talk about sleep and airway health and how obstructive sleep apnea can be linked to so many chronic problems. Harmful oral care products, detergents, antimicrobials, and chemicals. By the way, xylitol and erythritol are chemicals. They are not 
Yes, the xylitol can occur naturally in cranberries, but it is not the xylitol that's being used in oral care products. That is uh, being uh, made from very often organic sources, whether it's um, GMO corn cobs, which was the original de um, uh, development of it, or um, or uh, pretty little birch bark. It goes through a chemical process of hydrogenation and produces what's known in organic chemistry textbook as a high value chemical. So there are lots of harmful ingredients in oral care products that are misunderstood and thought of as, well, it must be healthy. It's made from something natural. And that's not the case. Um, there are natural sources of arsenic um, and even drugs that are made from plants like the uh, digitalis plant or the digoxin, which is a product, uh, heart product made from a plant, uh, the foxglove plant, um, can be, if, if taken improperly, lead to heart irregulation and even death. <music>